Tornadoes, toddlers, and traffic. When you're behind the wheel, you can witness some strange stuff. It can be hard to describe the hijinks you see on the open highway. But if you've got a camera rolling, you might just go viral on YouTube. We've got some footage today that ranges from bafflingly bizarre to truly terrifying. Fasten your seatbelts for a second installment of the craziest moments caught on dashcam. Stop and go traffic can lead to some of the most boring moments behind the wheel. However, on May 2, 2017, a driver in Muckleteo, Washington, captured a cinematic scene that looked like it was ripped straight from the silver screen. Shortly after taking off from Payne Field, just north of Seattle, the small Piper aircraft lost engine power and was forced to make an emergency landing near the intersection of Muckleteo Speedway and Harbor Point Boulevard Southwest. Although it looks dreadful, the pilot did an excellent job, and there were no casualties in the incident, despite the heavy traffic on the street. The fireball was caused when a fuel cell ruptured as the plane grazed a stoplight just before impact. Gasoline poured out of the gash and caused a nearby vehicle to catch fire. With such a Hollywood-esque explosion and dramatic crash, you would expect a fair bit of carnage. But only two individuals suffered minor injuries. All in all, though the road closures and brief power outages were likely annoying to Muckle Teo residents, it could have been much worse. Registered to Klamath Falls Aviation in Klamath Falls, Oregon, the plane's owner is listed as Justin Dunaway. Though Dunaway is certified as a student pilot by the Federal Aviation Administration, local news reported that he was a passenger during the crash. The name of the heroic pilot as well as the cause of the engine failure remains unknown, though the National Transportation Safety Board is reportedly investigating it. Truck driver Chad Mock is a veteran with 20 years of experience under his belt. By his own admission, he's witnessed some strange events. But the scene that unfolded in front of him on January 14, 2019, topped them all. While driving his black pickup truck through the downtown streets of Mankato, Minnesota, Mock saw something that was unbelievable, even to his experienced eyes. Thankfully, the two-year-old toddler in the footage was unharmed and reportedly not even upset when Mock reached her on the road. About 20 minutes after the child fell out of the 2004 Honda Civic, a distraught woman appeared on the scene as first responders examined the young girl. Accompanied by another small child and a friend who could translate for her, the woman identified herself as 40-year-old Maimuna Hassan and said she was the toddler's mother. A tearful Hassan, who had been behind the wheel when her daughter was ejected from the vehicle, insisted that the toddler had indeed been properly secured. She offered a further explanation to authorities, noting that the car door just popped open, so the child must have unlocked it. However, even if the car door had accidentally opened, if the seat were correctly installed, it would not have exited her Civic. Upon further inspection of Hassan's car, it was revealed that the latch straps one would typically use to secure a car seat were missing, even though a 2004 Honda Civic is latch compatible. A second car seat, likely for the other young child in Hassan's care, was found in the vehicle as well, though this one was properly installed. Furthermore, when the child was rescued from the road, it was discovered that the chest clip on the car seat was unbuckled. Essentially, the child was failed on three levels. Though Hassan was not arrested right away, police discovered that she was not legally allowed to drive. 
At the time of the incident, she only had a learner's permit, meaning that she should not have been behind the wheel without another licensed driver in the vehicle to supervise her. Eventually, she was charged with one count of child endangerment, one count of a license violation, and one count of not fastening a child's restraint. Though these charges can carry a sentence up to a year in jail and fines ranging from $1,000 to $3,000, a plea agreement was reached in 2021. Hassan pled guilty to charges of careless driving and received an infraction for improperly restraining a child. Sentenced to a year of probation and mandated parenting and child restraint classes, Hassan can avoid jail if she keeps a clean driving record during her probationary period. Should she fail, she could face up to 90 days in prison. In September 2015, dash cam footage captured a driver of a 2010 Hyundai Sonata behaving erratically on Harbor Boulevard in La Habra, California. The woman who exited the vehicle, identified as 22-year-old Jasmine Lacey, was found wandering the area on foot by California Highway Patrol. Initially taken to the hospital following the incident for a non-injury-related reason, she was later arrested for driving under the influence. A CHP officer at the scene noted that Lacey was unable to clarify a statement because she was so intoxicated. Thankfully, though, the collision between the Honda and the Lincoln in the oncoming lanes, caused by her carelessness, resulted in only minor injuries. However, after only four days in custody, Lacey was released while officials awaited the results of her blood tests. Los Angeles County booking records state that there was insufficient evidence to support a criminal complaint. Once her blood tests were received, it seems that Lacey was charged with driving under the influence of drugs, hit and run with a runaway car, and driving without a valid license. When she failed to appear on her appointed court date of February 10, 2016, a warrant was issued for her arrest, and she was apprehended on April 18 of the same year. Some questions were raised about Lacey's mental competency, and she was scheduled to be assessed at the Mental Health Courthouse in Los Angeles on May 19, 2016, before appearing for her hearing at the West Covina Courthouse the next day. Today, the case of Lacey versus the people of the state of California is listed as closed, but the outcome and her final judgment and sentencing remain unclear. It looks like she spent some time in the Los Angeles County Jail, but her current whereabouts are unknown. After a long shift at a Circle K gas station in Louisville, Kentucky, 22-year-old Sean Blomer was ready to head home. It was August 2012, and Sean made his way out into the muggy summer night towards his car. Before he had a chance to leave, two men and a woman approached him. Suddenly, the trio attacked Sean, binding his wrists, gagging him, and covering his head with a towel. They unceremoniously shoved him into the trunk of his own car, noting, this isn't personal, we need your car before slamming the lid shut and leaving Sean in the sweltering darkness. Hours passed, and as Sean drifted in and out of consciousness, the carjackers drove up and down the city streets looking for drugs. During a period of lucidity, Sean noticed that the vehicle had stopped. Peering through a small crack in his damaged taillight, he was able to see flashing red and blue lights. Thankfully for Sean, 
his expired license plates attracted the attention of a pair of policemen on patrol. When he heard one of the officers ask the man driving the car about the vehicle's insurance, he began to shout and pound on the trunk. Alarmed, officers Frederick Wilson and Daniel Goldbert drew their weapons and radioed for backup. All three of his attackers were arrested at the scene and identified as 27-year-old Trent Bly, 28-year-old Joseph Davis, and 28-year-old Brittany Elder. Charged with kidnapping, wanton endangerment, and theft, they were each booked into jail with a $50,000 bond. Elder faced some additional charges after officers found three bags of heroin and a crack pipe on her person while they were conducting a routine pat-down. In 2014, the three were found guilty of their crimes. At the time of recording, it appears that they are still serving their sentences in various Kentucky state penitentiaries and will likely remain there until 2025 at the earliest. As for Sean, he was rushed to the hospital following his ordeal and treated for dehydration as well as some minor bumps and bruises. When his rescuers were celebrated for their heroism at a ceremony shortly afterward, he had the opportunity to meet them. Grateful and happy to be alive, Sean noted, there is not a lot I can say except thank you, but it means more than that. It was a pristine fall day in Telluride, Colorado on October 10, 2020. 23-year-old Susie Rhodes, her boyfriend Rich Faller, and their two Labrador dogs piled into Faller's cherry red Jeep Wrangler and headed out to Bridal Vale Falls for a day of off-roading in the mountains. As the couple turned onto Black Bear Pass, an off-roading trail notorious for its tight and dangerous switchbacks, they had no idea what lay in store. Just before the events we see in the video, Faller had parked his Wrangler and applied the emergency brake before exiting the vehicle to assist another off-roader behind them. Moments later, the car began to slide off the trail, with Rhodes and the two labs still inside. Panicked, Faller attempted to jump back inside the Jeep to steer it away from the edge, but it was too late. The car began to roll throwing him onto some nearby rocks before tumbling down the edge of the mountain. Though Rhodes and the dogs were eventually thrown from the vehicle before the video we saw took place, she estimates that the car flipped at least 20 times before she was ejected. The Telluride Daily Planet reported that all in all, the Jeep rolled over six switchbacks before coming to rest. Faller and Rhodes were both taken to Telluride Medical Center where they were assessed. He was treated for minor injuries and released, while Rhodes was flown to St. Mary's Hospital in the larger city of Grand Junction, Colorado, about two and a half hours north. Rhodes miraculously survived the horrific accident, though she suffered a spinal cord injury that impaired her ability to walk. Wheelchair-bound and given a 5% chance at recovering her mobility, she worked tirelessly in physical therapy. By April 2021, she was able to stand and take small steps with the assistance of her walker. Her recovery has continued well, and she hopes to return to Black Bear Pass in the near future. As for the dogs, one was found immediately after the accident unharmed. The second dog was missing for a few days, but was later recovered by a couple who heard frantic barking and spotted the puppy stranded on a steep incline. Thankfully, he too was healthy with nothing but a small scratch on his leg. At the time of recording, it is unclear how Faller and Rhodes are doing in the present, but we wish them the best in their continued recovery. Mother Nature has a way of making us feel small. And tornadoes are one of her fiercest weapons. 
Although the United States is the best-known country for tornadoes, receiving over 800 per year on average, Europe can also see some nasty twisters, particularly during the spring season, though they are a bit less common. In May 2018, Asterios Kavetsis was driving through Schwamtal, Germany, when his dash cam happened to capture some footage of Mother Nature flexing her muscles. Malaga! Pura Malaga! Pura Malaga! The tornado was spawned when a mass of warm, humid air collided with an incoming cold front and was rated as an F2 on the Fujita scale. This means that wind speeds reached anywhere between 113 to 157 miles per hour, making it a considerably destructive storm. According to the Rheinisch Post, two people were injured and 40 to 50 homes were damaged. Some properties were no longer inhabitable after the storm passed through, and emergency shelters were needed for many families. Fallen trees blocked roads and rail lines, and five towns, including Schwamtal, were all affected. Though the storm came and went in a matter of 15 minutes, it caused a fair bit of mayhem during its brief duration. The motorist was extremely lucky. One of the worst places to be during a tornado is inside of a car, since it can be easily picked up and thrown by a strong enough twister. If you find yourself in a similar situation, the best course of action is to abandon your car and seek shelter in a low-lying ditch if no other safe shelter is available to you. If you must stay in your car, stay low and cover your head. Oh. So even if you think you've seen it all, remember that the dash cam always sees more. Which topics would you like to see covered next? Don't forget to like and subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching!